Maccabeem Shani, two Maccabees, eight. Then Yahuda Maccabee, and they that were with him, went privily into the towns and called their kinsfolk, kin, rather, kinsfolks together, and took unto them all such as continued in the Yahudim's belief, and assembled about six thousand men. And they called upon Yahweh, that he would look upon the people that was trodden down of all, and also pity the temple profaned of wicked men, and that he would have compassion upon the city, sore defaced and ready to be made even with the ground, and hear the blood that cried unto him. And remember the wicked slaughter of harmless infants, and the blasphemies committed against his name, and that he would show his hatred against the wicked. Now when Yahudah Maccabee had his company about him, he could not be withstood by the heathen, for the wrath of Yahuwah was turned into mercy. Therefore he came at unawares, and burnt up towns and cities, and got into his hands the most commodious places, and overcame and put to flight no small number of his enemies. But specially took he advantage of the night for such privy attempts, so much so that the fruit of his holiness was spread everywhere. So when Philip saw that this man increased by little and little, and that things prospered with him still more and more, he wrote unto Ptolemy, the governor of Silo Aram and Phoenicia, to yield more aid to the king's affairs. Then forthwith choosing Nicanor, the son of Patroclus, one of his special friends, he sent him with no fewer than twenty thousand of all nations under him, to root out the whole generation of the Yahudim, and with him he joined also Gorgias, a captain, who in matters of war had great experience. So Nicanor undertook to make so much money of the captive Yahudim, and should defray the tribute of two thousand talents, which the king was to pay to the Romaim. Wherefore immediately he sent to the cities upon the sea coast, proclaiming a sale of the captive Yahudim, and promising that they should have fourscore and ten bodies for one talent, not expecting the vengeance that was to follow upon him from El Shaddai. Now when word was brought unto Yahudah of Nicanor's coming, and he had imparted unto those that were with him that the army was at hand, they that were fearful and distrusted the justice of Elohim fled and conveyed themselves away. Others sold all that they had left, and with all besought Yahweh to deliver them from being sold by the wicked Nicanor before they met together. And if not for their own sakes, yet for the covenants he had made with their fathers, and for his holy and glorious name's sake, by which they were called, so Yahudah Maccabee called his men together unto the number of six thousand, and exhorted them not to be stricken with terror of the enemy, nor to fear the great multitude of the heathen, who came wrongly against them, but to fight manfully, and to set before their eyes the injury that they had justly done to the holy place, rather that they had unjustly done to the holy place, and the cruel handling of the city, whereof they made a mockery, and also the taking away of the government of their forefathers. For they said, rather, for they, said he, trust in their weapons and boldness, but our confidence is in El Shaddai, who at a beck can cast down both them that come against us and also the world. Moreover, he recounted unto them what helps their forefathers had found, and how they were delivered when under Khan Kheriv, rather, Khan Kheriv, a hundred fourscore and five thousand perished. And he told them of the battle that they had in Babel with the Galatim, how they came but eight thousand in all that, rather, in, in all to the business with four thousand Macedonians. And that the Macedonians being perplexed, the eight thousand destroyed a hundred and twenty thousand because of the help that they had from heaven, and so received a great booty. Thus, when he had made them bold with these words, 
and ready to die for the Torah and the country. He divided his army into four parts and joined with himself his own brethren, leaders of each band, to wit Shimon and Yosef and Jonathan, giving each one fifteen hundred men. Also he appointed Eleazar to read the Holy Sefer. And when he had given them this watchword, the help of Elohim, himself leading the first band, and by the help of El Shaddai they slew above nine thousand of their enemies, and wounded and maimed the most part of Nicanor's host, and so put all to flight, and took their money that came to buy them, and pursued them far. But lacking time they returned, for it was the day before the Shabbat, and therefore they would no longer pursue them. So when they had gathered their armor together, and spoiled their enemies, they occupied themselves about the Shabbat, yielding exceeding praise and thanks to Yahweh, who had preserved them unto that day, which was the beginning of mercy distilling upon them. And after the Shabbat, when they had given part of the spoils to the maimed, and the widows and orphans, the remnant they divided among themselves and their servants. When this was done, and they had made a common supplication, they besought the merciful Yahuwah to be reconciled with his servants for ever. Moreover, of those that were with Timotheus and Bachides, who fought against them, they slew above twenty thousand, and very easily got high in strongholds, and divided among themselves many spoils more, and made the maimed, orphans, widows, yea, and the aged also, equal in spoils with themselves. And when they had gathered their armor together, they laid them up all carefully in convenient places, and the remnant of the spoils they brought to Yahu Shalaim. They slew also Philachis, that wicked person, who was with Timotheus, and had annoyed the Yahudim many ways. Furthermore, at such time as they kept the feast for the victory in their country, they burnt Callisthenes, that had set fire upon the holy gates, who had fled into a little house, and so he received a reward meet for his wickedness. As for that most ungracious Nicanor, who had brought a thousand merchants to buy the Yahudim, he was through the help of Yahweh brought down by them, of whom he made least account, and putting off his glorious apparel and discharging his company, he came like a fugitive servant through the midland unto Antioch, having very great dishonor, for that his host was destroyed. Thus he that took upon him to make good to the Romeim, their tribute by means of captives in Yerushalayim, told abroad that the Yahudim had Elohim to fight for them, and therefore they could not be hurt, because they followed the Torah that he gave them.